Hi, my name is Jesse Adams. I'm a city councilor at large in Northampton. I'm running for re-election and would like your support. I have been an attorney with a law practice on Main Street for eight years. After having lived downtown on Main Street for 15 years and in downtown Florence for two years, on July, I bought a home in Leeds with my wife, Emily. We were married last weekend on October 10th. I have a passion for public service and am proud of my accomplishments, as well as what I have stood for in my eight years in public office. I believe in good, effective city services, fairness, accountability, and affordability. I want our city to be a home to all people who choose to live here. I want city government to be fair and accessible. These things are what matter to me. I work towards these things daily as a city councilor. As an attorney, I fight daily for fairness, justice, and the constitutional rights of those who have been marginalized, ignored, and underserved in our society. I fight for the equal treatment of people both as a city councilor and an attorney. In my six years in the city council, I have worked hard to make our community a better place for all those who live here and visit. One accomplishment of which I am proud is having written the plastic bag ban ordinance, which passed unanimously and will take effect next year. This city law will further our commitment to sustainability and environmental protection. If re-elected, I will continue to fight for environmental justice, fairness, accessibility, and accountability in government, and a community in which all can afford to live. Please vote for me on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mark Warner, and I'm a candidate for city council. In the last six years, Northampton has implemented three tax overrides, a new $2 million stormwater fee, a new tax on restaurant meals, the 3% Community Preservation Act fee, and 40 to 50% increases in water rates, sewer rates, solid waste fees, and the hotel and motel tax. Now the city is biting its nails at Smith College and a dozen other tax-exempt properties will voluntarily agree to make big city payments in lieu of taxes. I don't think these actions were necessarily wrong, but the key point is that we're at the bottom of our bag of revenue tricks. We have no choice now but to focus on the cost side of the equation. The council has a big role in this process. I know they do. I helped to write the new city charter that gave it to them. But it's not using this authority very effectively. In budget meetings with the mayor, they don't ask probing questions. And in council, they pin our problems on Boston or Washington or Wall Street. They take up cultural or international issues that distract our attention from real city business. Are these really our values? Are they making the effort to ensure informed decisions? I think we can do better. Let me give you my guiding principles on how the council should deal with budget matters. Take seriously your role of engaged oversight in the budget process. Promote efficiency. Be honest. Be fair to all of your citizens and businesses. You know, the council has often expressed its concern for social justice. I share this view. But here's the best thing you can do for social justice. Run your city efficiently and keep it affordable for residents at all income levels. The council will also have to set its own good example. It should accept the conclusion of the Independent Elected Officials Compensation Committee that it is unfair for part-time city councillors to have city-funded health insurance when all other part-time city workers do not. How do you think that looks to other city employees? What about their unions? The council decision last year to ignore the Independent Committee's recommendation betrays our values, and it undermines the council authority to ask for shared sacrifice from all city stakeholders. This will affect us adversely when city labor contracts come up for renewal. I'm delighted to be the challenger in this race. I invite you now to go to my website, warnerforcouncil.com. Look at my biography. Look at the core democratic principles that guide my sense of justice. Look at my clear stand on a dozen city issues. Look at my op-eds and letters to the editor. You'll see that I am sensible, that my background is consistent with the ideals of the citizen legislator, and that my views and values are consistent with the vast majority of yours. It will be my pleasure and my honor to serve in the City Council. I promise you integrity, conscientiousness, civility, maturity, and the good sense to focus on the real city issues. Thank you. I'll see you around town, and I welcome your vote on November 3rd. Hi. My name's Elaine Real, and I'm running for trustee of Forbes Library. I want to tell you a little bit about my experience and background, but before I do that, I want to urge all of you to honor Forbes and the great work and great job it does for the community by going out and voting on November 3rd. I know it's not a very, there's not a lot of contested races on the ballot, um, but five good people are running for three slots on this Board of Trustees.
My background uh, of service to the to the city is is uh, fairly simple. I've I've been a lawyer for 36 years. I've recently retired, and I served as city solicitor. I'm on the license commission. I was labor counsel to Forbes for 15 years, and I I know what I think would be effective advocacy on behalf of the library. So I'd ask you to con consider me carefully, to honor me with your vote, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what I heard as I was out in the community going to farmers markets and asking people to sign my nomination papers. I would ask people uh, to sign them, and the first thing, the first response, wonderful response, Almost everyone said, I love Forbes. I use Forbes. Forbes is a great institution. And almost no one realized that the trustees who hire the director of Forbes Library and who manage and establish policy for Forbes Library, that they're elected officials, elected by the whole community. And because Forbes has suffered uh, greatly during the last, well, We've, we've had a lot of fiscal challenges in Northampton during the last decade and a half. You know, Saturday hours have been cut, evening hours have been cut. The outreach program, which serves homebound um, elders and disabled and goes into nursing homes, almost had to be eliminated this year, if not for some private donors who came forward and generously funded it. So I'd like to, to work to get more of Forbes for the community. I, I recognize we have financial constraints, but I think the community needs to support Forbes because Forbes serves in so many ways this community. Thank you for considering me for this position. Greetings, I'm Janet Gross and a candidate for a Forbes Library trustee position. I've lived in Northampton since 2008 and prior to that served as a faculty member and academic administrator. I'm also a frequent Forbes patron, currently researching the women of Round Hill Road. And recently at the Forbes, quite serendipitously, I discovered John Palfrey's Bibliotheque, Why Libraries Matter More in the Age of Google. Despite my affection for print, the Forbes' future is destined to become increasingly digital. There are amazing virtual possibilities out there and on the horizon. In theory, it's an exciting time for libraries. But alas, like libraries across the nation, the Forbes has been the target of budget cuts. The recent cut to the outreach program, along with raise your own funds, like previous cuts that resulted in reduced open hours, compromises service to patrons. Too often, funding cuts are based on false notions that libraries only provide information. So why fund them when the internet can answer all our questions, when Amazon and Google can supply our need for information and media at low cost, and Starbucks serves Wi-Fi along with its coffee? How quickly we overlook the library's vital role in maintaining the health of our community, our democracy, and our future. From Palfrey's book, I went to the Forbes' current strategic plan. There's no doubt the Forbes is a beloved institution and its staff sensitive to the needs of the community. Yet the library's current plan fails to address its future, what it might look like, how we might get there. It's time to consider the Forbes of 2025 and beyond, to engage in a rigorous planning process that addresses, for example, the collaborative use of powerful digital resources alongside purchase of print and includes a compelling fundraising agenda. It is critical that the Forbes take advantage of the latest technology out there, be sufficiently strong to resist commercial influence, and above all, continue to promote equality and opportunity through free access to educational and cultural resources, as well as information. If elected to the Forbes' board, I will use my experience to promote the library's broad mission and work to ensure that the next strategic planning process set to begin in 2016 is forward-looking and well executed, with the goal of sustaining and augmenting the Forbes' many invaluable if currently too little recognized, 
contributions to Northampton. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nat Reed, and I'm running for school committee at large because I love Northampton. It's the greatest place I've ever lived, and I want to also have great schools. I have two sons who both started in kindergarten at Bridge Street School. One is now loving the band at JFK, and the other is loving his history classes at the high school. They've had great teachers and great experiences, but I think we can do better. I've mostly worked as a writer and editor, but I come from a family of teachers, and I've always been involved in education. I've taught theater and filmmaking to kids. I've taught uh, writing and editing to adults. I've taught environmental education on a boat in New York Harbor. My wife and I now have a communications business, which has allowed us to go into schools throughout Massachusetts that have made really huge improvements, most of them in towns that are poorer and more challenged than Northampton. And I saw methods in those classrooms that really made me say, wow, I want that for our kids here in Northampton. So that's a big part of what I want to work on on the school committee. I want to work on developing the best possible classroom methods like I saw there so that all of our students can get the help they need and also the challenge that they want. To do that, we need our teachers and principals to get really good research-backed training and the support that they need. And that requires an active school committee that has a strong vision, sets ambitious goals, and is responsive to the community. We also need to fix our funding problems by calling on the city, the state, and the federal government to really make sure that everyone's paying their fair share. So thank you for watching this video and for caring about the public schools. Uh, our public schools are really important. They're the one path that lets any child, regardless of their income challenges or family background, to get an education, to go to college if they want to, and have a secure life. They're the thing that gives our country its fairness and also its economic power. If you'd like to learn more about me or get in touch, you can go to votereed.com. That's R-E-A-D-E. -E. And thank you very much for watching this. Hello. My name is Peter Koble, and I'm running for Forbes Library Trustee. I want to thank NCTV for inviting me to speak directly with you, the voters of Northampton. Let me begin by saying there's a great field of candidates running for the open trustee positions. It's a sign of how much our community loves and values Forbes. The race is important because the newly elected trustees will have an opportunity to shape the library for years to come. So it's a competitive race, and all the candidates are well qualified. But we all have different backgrounds and bring different things to the table. I'm a nonfiction author and a nonprofit communications writer. I've been deeply involved with the library for more than two years. During that time, I've served on the board of the Friends of Forbes Library. I'm also the editor of the library's newsletter and recently started a book club at the library devoted to nature and the environment. So what does the Friends group do? We're fundraisers, hosting the annual wine tasting and garden tour. We raise a substantial amount of money each year, which mostly goes to support the Book and General Media Fund. We also help to fund the new elevator. But the Friends also support other library programs and initiatives. The library has specific needs, the director, Janet Molding, or the assistant director, Lisa Downing, will ask the Friends Board for specifically targeted gifts. Friends recently funded major audiovisual upgrades in the Coolidge Museum and the Community Room. As board members, we must make tough decisions about how our funds are spent. Over the summer, Janet and Lisa informed us the library's outreach program, which delivers books to patrons who can't come to the library to get them, was in danger. And we moved quickly to find a way to save it. Fortunately, a number of folks in our community anonymously donated enough to keep it going for the next year. But I'm working on a special committee made up of a few trustees and a few friends to find ways to make the beloved program sustainable. The last friends meeting, I introduced a motion which passed overwhelmingly to fund a volunteer coordinator who will train people to deliver books. So I'm quite well aware of the library's needs. But I'm also aware of the many accomplishing, 
accomplishments made by Forbes' terrific staff. I want to make certain that the library continues to serve our community in the best possible way. As a trustee, I would hope to make an even greater contribution. I would be very grateful for your vote on November 3rd.